and welcome to episode 32 of Board Game Blitz, a proud member of the Dice Tower Network and a podcast about all things board games that you can listen to in less time than it takes to get through a con registration line right when it opens. This week, we're recapping our experiences at Origins and Dice Tower Con. Rather than following our usual format, we're just going to have some fun discussing our favorite parts of both cons, including the people we met, the games we played, and the neat experiences we had. And now, here are your hosts, Ambi, Cassidy, and me, Crystal. So June and July were pretty exciting times for us uh, here at Board Game Blitz because all three of us got to attend at least one board game convention. Yay! Hooray! Yay! <laughs> so, uh, Cassidy, we kind of held off on your con report, as it were, from Origins because we knew that we were going to be doing Dice Tower Con too, and we didn't want to like have to split up the con reports. So I would love to hear about what all you did at Origins. What was new? What was exciting? Who you met? What you got to do? What you played? Everything. <laughs> just tell me everything. I usually just go in and buy things and leave because I'm only there for an afternoon usually. Since it's my local convention, I still feel obligated to do my daily weekend routine stuff. And so this year I actually took Friday off work and went for the majority of the day and I got to volunteer at the Dice Tower booth. So I got to hang out with some of those guys we met at MeepleCon and then meet some of the some of the other folks while uh, helping man their cameras and then having them do an impromptu interview that was terrifying because <laughs> things weren't working the way they were supposed to. I was terrified and nervous the whole time. And you did such a good job. <laughs> that was a great interview. And Ambi will, being our awesome person behind the scenes, will link to <laughs> that part of that video on the Dice Towers channel and for any of the Blitzketeers who missed it when Dice Tower was doing their live coverage. So if you want to see the Dice Towers interview with Cassidy at Origins, we will have that in the show notes for you. <laughs> Good luck with that future, Ambi. <laughs> <laughs> So I actually, um, I did two hours with them Friday morning. That was the first thing I did. And then after that, it was Wandering Vendor Hall. I ran into a couple of our Patreon supporters and got to play some games with them. We just did some demo stuff in the Vendor Hall. So that was awesome. I know I missed some people and I felt really bad. I just ran out of time and it was kind of sad. Well, at a con as big as Origins, I think that that's to be expected, like time and space and the ability to meet up at all <laughs> kind of all factor into making that difficult to do. I usually don't play a lot of games, um, Origins especially, or Gen Con either. And I played seven games, which doesn't seem like a lot. But for me at a con, that is a lot. Usually I get maybe five games if I'm lucky. So I played seven games. And... Unearth was my favorite by far from the con, which I'll be discussing in detail next episode. And Perlock Holmes. So, okay. I love this game. I So this is Perlock Holmes, spelled P-U-R-R. -R. Uh, Perlock Holmes. I think it's the Furriarty tale. Like, Furriarty's tale. Furriarty. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, Trail, I think, right? Furly, yeah. Furriarty's Trail. Yeah. Maybe. It's on my shelf. I should know this, right? <laughs> When I first saw this game before Origins, I kind of rolled my eyes and was like, are you kidding me with the cat puns? Because this is ridiculous. But then I played it and loved it and purchased it. And now it will forever be on my shelf because it's a fun little deduction game. Yeah, I got to play it at Dice Tower Con too. Yeah, it was pretty cute and simple deduction game. But yeah, pretty fun. Yeah, I think it'd be something pretty simple to play with kids, which is mm -hmm. nice. Plus, they will love the puns. <laughs> <laughs> thank you children for being the way you are <laughs> hey wait i like puns too <laughs> yeah i already talked about kit and clash um in the last episode i think and that was another one i got to try there too so i honestly had the most fun at origins that i've had i think ever attending except for maybe my first one because it was my first one and that was honestly because of all the people that i got to meet that i've been interacting with online and just being involved in the community more than I had been in the past. So Origins was awesome for me. Yay. Was it weird to have people recognize yes. you either by <laughs> face or by voice? It was so weird. I, it was so weird. And I was telling Matt about it because he wasn't there with me Friday. 
And then Sunday we went back and people had, were still stopping me. And he'd been giving me crap about it because he's like, oh, internet superstar. And then when he was with me, people were still stopping me. And it was still weird. But people got to meet my baby on Sunday if they saw me. Yay! Yay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, Ambi and I, I think, had similar thoughts oh yeah everyone recognized crystal's voice because she had just been on the dice tower (laughs) podcast so like everyone there listens to the dice tower podcast (laughs) they literally like i can't i don't know how many people came up to me and they were like oh i was listening to you on my way in (laughs) and i mean it doesn't it, it definitely doesn't help that i'm a loud person which it's so funny on epic gaming nights podcast from last week which will now be the last week yeah we last this tuesday episode. yeah last tuesday rob was talking about how how lovely it was to meet me and how loud i am <laughs> and he said he liked it because he's a loud person too but i was like yep i was like i'm pretty loud and it's kind of like i try and kind of i don't try and change who i am when i meet new people but i do kind of try to subdue myself and tone it down a my, little and not scare yeah away. just a little bit <laughs> Yeah, because, like, I I do have a very big personality, and I don't want to, like, intimidate people or, like, scare them off right away because I want to be your friend. (laughs) But sometimes when I'm really excited, I have no control over my volume or anything else. So I'm glad that I didn't, at least I didn't, it didn't appear that I scared anyone away. (laughs) So other than Unearth and Perlock Holmes... Were there any other games that you either got to play or that you saw at Origins that were kind of standouts or things that you want to try in the future or anything like that? Uh, Baron Park, but we already discussed that. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah, no. Um, Yeah, Baron Park is still, I I mean, it's been, it hasn't really been that long. It's been, what, a month, but it's still really awesome. There's a game from Renegade called Sentient, which has beautiful dice. The, the, oh god, their di- the, the dice are so pretty. The dice are so pretty. And the game, I did get it to demo it, but the baby was with me and she was she was not cooperating or wanting to sit still. So I feel, one, bad for everyone that had to demo that with me. <laughs> and two, bad for the guy that was giving us the demo. But the game was neat. It was a little too mathy for me. And I know it wasn't even, it wasn't even really that mathy, but I don't like to do math in my games. Unless I'm playing solo, apparently. But it's it's such a pretty game. It was such a pretty game. It does look very neat on the table and the box and the art is so pink. And I won't lie, I love that. I'm <laughs> the sucker for girly colors. But yeah, a lot of people were playing it and I almost got into a game. I was this close, but I, I had to go uh, take a phone call and they were like almost ready to start. And I was like, if you, you know, if I'm not back, start without me. And I got back like just as they had started the game and I was like, darn it. So... <laughs> I watched a little bit of it, and it looks very interesting. I don't know if it'll be a game that I'll love, but it looks really cool, and I still am interested in trying it. So was there any one, Cassidy, that you met at Origins that you want to give a shout-out to or anything like that? Well, I already gave my shout-out to the the two designers of Kit and Clash in the last episode. They were lovely people. And I can't wait to see them uh, at the next con. I think they'll be at Gen Con. So it'd be awesome to see them again. And, oh, who else did I see? Oh, I'm lo- I'm forgetting names now. Uh, I did run into Patrick from What Did You Play last week, this week. I always say that wrong. <laughs> what did you play last week? This, this week. week. I always this say week. that wrong. Sorry, guys. I still like you guys. I suck. <laughs> but, yeah, I ran into him. I went down, I want to say thurs- Thursday night, late night for – an after hours charity thing that they were doing. I ran into him there for a second. Oh, and the lovely ladies from Great Way Games. I did get to meet them and they were lovely. They are basically <laughs> the best humans ever. If if our listeners, if you haven't started listening to Great Way Games yet, spoiler alert, their podcast is basically the best. And I that's weird <laughs> to say, but it's it's interesting because it's very different. I I think I, if I've mentioned this before, I don't care. I'm doing it again. But they don't talk about, like, recent gameplays or specific board games. They talk about the experience of playing board games. So it's very different than most board game podcasts. And they always put a positive spin on their discussions. It's never, like, talking about the bad aspects of things or negative stuff. 
And so it's just lovely to listen to. And they have Pet Corner, where they talk about what is going on in the lives of their pets. And I'm a sucker for animals. So, and really, those three ladies are just the best humans ever. So if you aren't listening to Great Way Games, you should definitely do that. Okay, so we got Cassidy's report from Origins. And then Ambie and I just recently got back from Dice Tower Con. And Ambie, I know you've been to big cons before, but this was my first not tiny con. <laughs> so yeah. it was really exciting for me. And apparently and it's, it's uh, not I'm, even a big one, right? Like, <laughs> No, not even close, technically. 3, like, it's 3,000 people. Yeah. But the biggest that I had been to prior to it was 600 yeah. people. So it felt pretty big to me. But I totally recognize why things like Origins, Gen Con, SN, UK Games Expo, like, why those things obviously are the big cons. Mm-hmm. But it was big to me. Yeah, it's big to me, too. best way. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it so much. I cannot tell you how good of a time I had. I mean, I'm going to try. <laughs> but the games that we played, the people that we met, the experiences that we had, it, all of it was just... I mean, I, it, the con as a whole is 100% my favorite experience overall in my life as a gamer. Hands down. not Like, no contest. Nothing comes close at this point. And I have already reserved a villa at the hotel for next year's Dice Tower Con <laughs> because, yeah. And apparently the villas are already sold out. Yeah, I think is what I saw online, <laughs> which is crazy. Like it's literally, literally a year away. And now the hotel rooms are still available, the suites, but the villas are the cool ones that have like two bedrooms and they can fit technically up to like eight people although we're not gonna have eight people in a villa but yeah i got a villa thank goodness and it sounds like ambie's gonna be my roomie next year <laughs> yay <laughs> and then we're trying to get uh netters plays annette uh, i think she might be in as well so she might be taking the other queen bed in the room with me oh man now i gotta um, see if i can make it <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you definitely do because it's the best it's hard though yeah. So enough about next year's Dice Tower Con. Let's talk about the one we just went to. <laughs> yeah. Ambie, do you have any games that you played that were kind of standouts for you at Dice Tower Con? Yeah, um, one of the one of my favorite games I played there was Magic Maze, which is a real time cooperative game for one to eight players. I played four and five players. I played it five times, I think. <laughs> so and it was this was one of the ones nominated for the Spiel. Uh, oh yeah, if I am yeah, it was. correct. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I really like real-time cooperative games. I have, like, a shelf of real-time cooperative games in my gaming shelf, like, a whole area of it. So this, I really wanted to try this out. And it's really interesting because there are four different pawns, different colored pawns that everyone can move, and you need to get them to their specific colored treasure and then get them out of the maze. But the trick is that each person can only do one or two types of actions. So, like, for example, I could only move a pawn north, and Cassidy could only move them east, and Crystal can only move them west or something. And so we have to work together to get them to go where we want to go. But we can't communicate during most of the game, except there's a wooden pawn that means do something. It's like a do something token. You can put it in front of someone and stare intently at them. And that means <laughs> that means that you want them to do something. <laughs> so, but then there's also, during some st- spots in the game, you can talk... Like, there's hourglass tokens on the board. If you go on there, you can turn the hourglass timer over, and you might get extra time from that, or you might get less time, depending on where where the timer was. And when you do that, you can talk until someone makes an action. So it's really interesting because there's four different pawns to move, and while you're focusing on one of them, everyone else can be focusing on another one, and they're, like, telling you to do something, but you don't know what you <laughs> they want to do because you're looking at this other pawn. It's hard. So you have to focus on everything at the same time. And it's really hard, but also really fun. That's Magic Maze. <laughs> so that was, like, probably one of my favorite games. I also got to play Attack on Titan, The Last Stand, which is based on the anime Attack on Titan. It's a one. It looks mini. pretty cool sitting on a table. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like King of Tokyo for the mini. You roll dice, and then the one has these cards that they play. So there's some mind games there. It was pretty fun. Oh, uh, I got to demo Flip Ships uh, from Renegade Games. It's a dexterity game where you're like flicking, flipping a ship onto these cards to attack them. And yeah, that I remember really seeing cool. that one there now. Well, actually, I saw it at a different event, an Origins event. Yeah, did the mm-hmm. whole thing. It was crazy. And the title is an ambigram, 
So like it reads the same upside down as right side up. Ooh, I like those. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize that. Uh, it really, to me, I didn't get to play it, but I watched some people playing that one. And it feels like that old arcade game where the aliens are coming down and you have to shoot them. It feels like a board game version of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh my god, what is the name Asteroid? of that Asteroid? No. Um... Space Invaders! Yeah, yes, that Space one. Invaders. Space Invaders. <laughs> it looks very cool. I got to try a number of cool word games while I was at Dice Tower Con. So I had been interested in a few of them beforehand, but got to try them for the first time. So I got to play Where Words, mm-hmm. which is the new Bezier Games title that people have compared to Insider. And we're not going to discuss the drama involved with that because there's always two sides to every story and we do not know all of the information. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Feel free to Google things if you want to look that up. But regardless of drama, Where Words is an awesome game. It is a lot of fun. It is like where uh, Insider in that it is related to 20 questions, but there's more secret roles like in One Night Ultimate Werewolf, one of Bézier's other titles. Mm -hmm. And so there's a little more ways to manipulate things and more people to do things, and it's very interesting. I also got to play Word Slam, which is a team-based game that, for me, basically entirely kills the game concept. I don't think, if I own Word Slam, which I don't yet, but once I do, I don't think I'll ever want to play concept ever again, because instead of using pictures and just pushing a little cube onto the board over and over and over again to try and get people to guess a thing. You've got this big pile of different types of words. You've got nouns and adjectives and verbs, and you are both teams are trying to get their teams to guess the same word, but they're giving clues on opposite sides of the table. So you can use what the other team is saying out loud as clues as well, and it's your team is trying to get the word first, mm-hmm. and it's so much fun, and it's fast, and it's frantic but it's awesome uh and then i also got to play wordsy which is i have to give a shout out to the designer gil hova he and i actually got to hang out quite a bit during dice tower con and he is just the most wonderful person ever i bought wordsy from him and since i didn't hadn't been able to get a copy of the networks prior to this i bought it from him there as well even though i didn't have very much space in my luggage And I cannot tell you how good it feels to take cash and hand it to a person for a thing that they created. I've done that in the past with like art and other things. But as far as like a board game was concerned, I don't think I've ever gotten the opportunity to hand money to the designer of a game for that game and take it from them. And it felt really cool. And it helps that Gil is just a wonderful guy. He's so nice. And he's a big fan of some other podcasts like Flip the Table. So he and I were able to talk about stuff like that. And I am, he also got to show me, ooh, he showed me the expansion for uh, the networks. That's going to be hitting Kickstarter, I believe, in August. And I don't know how much of it that he would want me to discuss. He was showing it to a few people, but um, just because I'm not certain how much he has made public, I won't mention the details, but I can tell you that it's going to give players special roles which will give them special powers they're very thematic and they are very cool so if you like the networks you definitely want to keep an eye on kickstarter in august for the new expansion coming out for that oh my gosh ambi we have to talk about strike (laughs) (laughs) so we've been seeing like rolling dice and taking names and some other and uh i think rodney smith is a fan as well Uh, we've seen a whole bunch of people talking about Strike Online for quite some time. Yeah. And so when I found out that Rob from Epic Gaming Night had a copy of it with him, I nearly tackled the man. And he's big. No, I didn't actually tackle him. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I said, you bring that out. You bring it out now. We're playing it. And I, I don't know how many times. To- actually, I can, I'm going to look and see how many times I played it over the course of the con. Because I st- hey, still keeping with my New Year's resolution, everyone. Still tracking all of my plays. So that's good. There's... Let's see. I played Strike a total of six times <laughs> during the con. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah, I only so, played it three times. For those who aren't familiar with the game, it's basically a plastic arena, like a <laughs> little bowl, and you throw dice into it and try to make them match, and then you get to pull dice back out of it, and then the next person goes, and that sounds really boring. <laughs> well, you can, like, hit the other dice with the dice you're throwing in to make them roll, which is the cool part of it, I think. Yeah. 
So I, I think it's, it's a mixture between a dexterity and press your luck game. And I know that there's arguments online against it being a dexterity game. I yeah. think there's a discussion going on actually right now in the uh, Ding and Dent podcasts yeah. forums on BGG about whether it's a dexterity game or not, because technically you do not have to use dexterity to play it. You can just simply roll the die into the bowl, but, but that's, that's not the fun of strike. Fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we also, we found out that we were playing technically by not the right rules, but we don't care. We like the rules that we were taught <laughs> and they're better that way. So. Yeah. Like I read the real rules and it's a lot less push your luck and less dexterity in the real rules. So it's less, I think it sounds a lot less fun in the real rules yeah. because you have no choices. <laughs> our, our way is better. Well, Rob's way, I guess, is better because he's the one who taught us. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that was good. Speaking of dexterity, I also got to try the new Dead of Winter Flick 'em Up game, mm. which I will admit when they announced, I was a little bit skeptical about. I mean, I own and like both Flick 'em Up and Dead of Winter, but a combination was kind of weird sounding to me. And um, it was super late at night when uh, we were playing it, and we did mess up some of the rules, so I don't have a completely 100% solid grasp on the game, but there are some very, very cool mechanics and pieces within the game. Like, anytime you make noise near a zombie, then a zombie rush happens, and what happens is there's this big tower, you place it behind the nearest zombie, then pick that zombie up. And sometimes you have to pick up other nearby zombies as well. And they go on top of the tower and then there's a trap door that you release and they slide down toward your character. And sometimes they hit you and sometimes they don't based on how far away they were. So there's a risk element involved in creating noise if you're really close to a zombie because it's likely that they're going to hit you and do damage when they rush you. And it's really quite, quite cool. Yeah, that sounds really cool. (laughs) Yeah, I was I was kind of blown away by the little tower. So, and there's different scenarios. There is a an ability to have a trader involved, but we didn't use that in our little quick gameplay of it. So I'm not certain how that will work, but it definitely sounds interesting. I just don't know. Like, if people are just bad at flicking, will they just look like the <laughs> trader anyway? I don't know. Um, but yeah, whenever, I think that's hitting retail soon. Maybe at Gen Con? I'm not certain. But uh, I, if you're going to be at a convention where it's being demoed, I definitely suggest at least giving it a try. My problem is I don't know if I need to own both regular Flick 'em Up and Flick 'em Up Dead of Winter. I think I prefer Dead of Winter, but I don't since I don't need to own both, I don't know, maybe I'll sell Flick 'em Up and just buy Dead of Winter. That might be an option. Okay, so we're already running out of time, which seems crazy because we could talk for probably hours. But uh, luckily, uh, Ambi wrote a blog about her experiences, and we have a vlog coming out now, soon, already. I don't know. Maybe it, <laughs> it might come out before this episode airs. Yes. Okay, so you should watch our vlog, which has some more stuff in it. Um, but I did have to mention that I got to play one of the new titles from Restoration Games, Downforce, which is their racing game, mm-hmm. and I really enjoyed it, which racing games, as I've mentioned on the podcast before, are not a genre that I tend to gravitate toward. It's definitely a fairly simple game, but it's a lot of fun. I played that too. It was fun. Like, you get to bet Yay. on the cards, and <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, like, you don't have to... You're, you're not necessarily racing. Like, you mm-hmm. own a car, but you don't ha- that car doesn't have to win for you to win, which is kind of nice, because yeah. you can bet on the other players. And then right after we finished uh, Downforce, so we were playing with uh, the guys from Restoration Games, and afterwards I very, like, sneakily pulled out my copy of Heartthrob and asked who wanted to play, and everybody that was playing Downforce was in for Heartthrob. So we played a game of Heartthrob, which, if you don't listen to Flip the Table, is one of their, like big wins that they bring to cons all over the place. And so I brought my copy and we got to judge 80s stock photography boys by the way they look, which is fun. And I did not intend this to happen, but after the con, I got a tweet from Justin Jacobson, the president of Restoration Games, who said that on a call, like their team for down or for restoration was talking about how they could theoretically bring back Heartthrob <laughs> Wow. And what what was really cool for me is like in the game we played, we ended up in a tie and I don't know what, a, if there's a tiebreaker in the rules, I don't know it. So I made up a tiebreaker kind of on the fly. And he said that in their call, they even discussed my tiebreaker that I created. And I was like, <gasps> I was wow. all like, 
<laughs> yeah, like real people who design games or bring back games talked about a thing that I did, and that was really cool for me. So, uh, needless to say, heartthrob. This this could be this could be the first you've heard, but if it if, if it comes back, I need at least a tiny like mention in the credits or something. I hope that I caused this to happen because it would be the best thing ever. I I'm just so excited. <laughs> All right, guys, we've barely touched on the all the games that we played, but we did want to give some shout outs to some of the amazing people that we met. And I know I'm going to forget some and that will make me feel horrible. But we got to meet uh, Nick, who is one of our listeners of the show and one of our Patreon supporters. And we got to play some games with him. He actually played Heartthrob with me. And that was super exciting because I guessed all of his answers correctly. So I felt like we had a little <laughs> Blitzketeer connection. We got to meet Rob and Roy from Epic Gaming Night. We got to meet Nicole, Suze, Mandy. We got to meet, oh my gosh, so many Dice Tower contributors. I can't even yeah, all of begin them. to name all of them. Spencer and Laura, uh, Hunter and Rebecca. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm forgetting literally everything right now. Ambie, who else did you get to meet? I'm really bad at remembering names. I think I met someone named Aaron who's a listener. <laughs> But yes, we met Aaron. Okay. <laughs> that, we took a picture with Aaron. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, I got to meet uh, Emerson Matsuchi, who is oh, a yeah. game designer who you may know from games like Specter Ops. Oh, and he uh, showed me a prototype of a game that's coming out at Gen Con, his new social deduction game, which is called Crossfire. Keep an eye out for that. Yeah, I want to try that. <laughs> uh, I already mentioned I met Gil. We got to meet uh, the guys from Stronghold Games and the Board Games Insider Podcast. Uh, Stephen Bonacore and Ignacy Chevichek. We got to meet the Dukes of Dice, Sean and Alex. We got to meet I, everyone. And seriously, this is going to sound cheesy, but literally everyone we met was so wonderful and so kind. And there's just not a bad person in the bunch. As far as like the content creators and Dice Tower contributors, Everybody is just wonderful. And if you said hi to us or high fived us or fist bumped us or hugged us or played a game with us, thank you, thank you, thank you so much because you made, at least for me personally, this was the best gaming experience of my entire life. And I cannot, it's because of the people. It's not because mm -hmm. of, the games are great, but it's because of the people that this was so wonderful yeah. for me. This was actually my fourth year at Dice Tower Con, and I keep coming back because of the people I've met. So, like, I got to, I've made friends throughout the years, like, uh, some of, some friends that we know that live in Florida, Gary and Michelle, like, we keep coming back and playing games with them at every Dice Tower Con, because we met them the first Dice Tower Con we went to, and, like, we have similar tastes in games, and like, there are a lot of other people that I see every year at Dice Tower Con, and it's like, we're friends now, because it's like, the, we all go to Dice Tower Con, which is really great, like, uh, Steph, there's Ron, uh, I don't know people's names. I'm really bad, but <laughs> yeah, I can't list everyone. But Basically, if you are listening to this and you <laughs> want to go to a board game convention, like a bigger one, like maybe not necessarily a local one, I think Dice Tower Con is a great first convention for just about anyone because there are lots of people who are putting up players wanted signs mm -hmm. and teachers wanted signs. And even as the con grows, that's still happening. Yeah. So it's easy to jump into a game with pretty much anybody. And like we set up games and we didn't even have a player's wanted sign like up yet, but somebody would walk by and say, oh, do you have an open seat? And we would say, yeah, sure. And they would sit down and play with us all the time. And it was just awesome. It's a great gaming environment and I would yeah. highly recommend it for anyone's first con. Yeah. And even though it doubled in size from last year, I was worried there wouldn't be as much table space, but they have the whole hotel now and there were always open tables to be able to play games. It wasn't too crowded, which is good. Yeah, it never really felt overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And that's it for this week's Board Game Blitz. Visit our website, boardgameblitz.com, to get links to all our social media pages, including our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Board Game Geek Guild. If you're enjoying the podcast and want to show us a little love, you can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. Just head to patreon.com slash boardgameblitz. Our patrons get a lot of benefits, including access to our private Slack channel where you can chat with us directly anytime. Our theme song was composed by Andrew Morrow. Technical support provided by Toby Mao. Board Game Blitz is a proud member of the Dice Tower Network. Check out the other shows in the network by visiting dicetowernetwork.com. Until next time, Blitzy happy people playing games. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. 
maybe future Ambi will be able to put a link to their <laughs> future stuff Ambie's in our show notes as well. Work this episode. Sorry, man. I'm I'm like future Ambi's horrible taskmaster. <laughs> I'm, Usually, I'll put a link if uh, we mention something. Because you're the best. Yeah. <laughs> you and future Ambi are the best <laughs> combined. <laughs> What about past Ambie? <laughs> I mean, you know what? Past, past Ambie, Ambie. <laughs> she's she's in the past. <laughs> so we barely we we've we've barely even scraped the top of the water. Is that a phrase? That's not a phrase. Ah, uh, that's scraped. you could yes. have been skimmed the top of the water. Because <laughs> you do that when you clean pools. I'm sick. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Uh, we. <laughs> I can't. No idioms. Idioms are a bad idea. 